You're watching the Urban Debate on Magic Bricks now on to a mega impact. The Maharashtra government has incorporated a few of the suggestions that this channel made in the final draft of the real estate regulatory rules which have now been forwarded to the Housing Ministry for final consideration. This comes after Magic Bricks now wrote to the State Housing Ministry pointing out that the draft rules had in fact been diluted in favour of developers. The state government, we are happy to report, has taken note of our suggestions and made some changes. Amitabh Balachandra gives us exclusive details. Magic Bricks Now's demands to make Maharashtra's data consumer friendly has caught the attention of the Housing Ministry. We learn exclusively from sources of the Housing Ministry uh, who've told us that two of our major demands, one of course is that money lenders are defined now under the Money Lenders Act. Second, a uh, carpet area which could be recalculated on possession earlier uh, will be done so with a certain cap. These two demands are being considered very, very seriously. However, there are no changes that's been made to the escrow account. We also understand uh, that the State Housing Minister Ravindra Vaikar has gone on record to say that builders who differentiate home buyers based on, uh, you know, caste, creed, religion, etc., will be severely penalized. However, viewers must note that these rules, although final, are uh, with the State Housing Ministry and the State Housing Ministry will take a final call and notify them post the BMC elections. Amitabh Balachandra for Magic Bricks Now. Now remember, and I want to remind our viewers that the real estate regulator was formed to help, help people who had bought homes that were delayed, homes that were never delivered. Will these rules now help those people? That's the question we're asking and our phone lines are open. You can pick up the phone and call us. We know that this industry is in deep distress. But what does it mean for home buyers who are waiting for their homes? That's on the other side. It's a quick 30 second break. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. You're watching Urban Debate and Magic Breaks Now. Big changes in the real estate regulatory bill and we're very happy to report that some of the suggestions that we made to the Maharashtra government on this very channel have in fact been adopted. Something that we find very interesting, of course, is the fact that builders cannot refuse to sell flats on the grounds of religion, caste and eating habits. We've reported on this channel how several developers refuse to sell homes to non-vegetarians in certain projects. That will now have to stop also money uh, that is that was borrowed from money lenders which was a problem in the previous uh, rules can now uh, will now have to be defined by what is money lenders in the money lenders act in the show joining the show with me right now ara chaturvedi the chairman and managing director of shripati group is also the advisor to naredco representing the builders body ramesh prabhu chairman of uh, the society's uh, uh, groups prakash parikal president of hirwa Aditya Pratap is an advocate who joins us in the studio along with Anand Patwardhan, a very senior advocate, and Pankaj Kapoor, the managing director of Lysis Forest. I want to start with Ramesh Prabhu. Ramesh Prabhu, yeah. a couple of changes, welcome changes being made by the Maharashtra government here, but is this enough? No, there are other changes which have been suggested by us also. Like, uh, you know, the website should have all the details that is required to be presented. Mm -hmm. And one more thing, open car parking which has been allowed to be sold, it should be stopped. And third is related to, you know, uh, selling of car parking, which has been permitted, that is to be stopped. And as far as the Supreme Court is concerned, it has already said car parking cannot be sold. And then related to conveyance, here the conveyance is to be given to a federation as and when the federation is formed, which that means till such time only the structure is given, structure conveyance is not sufficient. These are the various suggestions which we have given and we are hopeful that it will be considered. All right, I want to just point out to our panel, these are the suggestions, uh, these are the revised rules that have come up right now. Carpet area can be recalculated on possession, but with a cap on the variation. Builders cannot refuse to sell flats on the grounds of religion, caste and eating habits. Termination of contract, builder will have to give buyers at least 15 days to respond. The right to sell open parking spaces has been taken away from developers and projects cannot be registered with the regulator if permission is not secured. Mr. Chaturvedi, is this, is this a stumbling block for you? If permission is not secured and we understand that that is a problem right now for the industry, how will this affect developers? In fact, I'll tell you, till the regulations are finalized, we're doing any debate on it. Mm. 
it makes no sense. No, but there is already a draft regulation in place. Hmm. We have all given a suggestion, objection, and we should wait for the government to come out with the final notification. We come out with the interim stages. There are at various levels the uh, draft regulation, the final policy gets stage by approval, and at various stage, some additions were done, deletions were done, and till the final setup has reached. We talking on the draft or we talking on the interlocutory issue. Hmm. We should not discuss on the interlocutory issue. That is my say. Is there a, is there a developers lobby right now talking to the Maharashtra government directly? No, it's not a developers lobby talking to the Maharashtra government. There are various levels at different stages. The rules get approved. It is not one stage. Hmm. Everybody has given the suggestion. I would say you are talking only of developers giving suggestion or developers. Let's see the past. In no, no, see, years, let me, I, let me I, just clear, I, I, clarify I a couple of things. No, let me just clarify a couple of things. Mm. Ramesh Prabhu, like he just said, there are various consumer groups that have given their suggestions. There are 500 suggestions that the Maharashtra government has received on these, yeah. on, on these rules, largely because we were of the view that the rules had been diluted in the favor of the developers. We've also given our suggestions, suggestions that we understand that were well received, were received in good spirit by the Maharashtra government and incorporated right now. Since the rules are still being written out, Mr. Chatur, and this comes from very, very reliable sources that these are the changes that are being made. We would like to have a conversation at this point to tell the government what we appreciate and if there is something that has been left let out, this would be a good point in which to bring it up. I just want to bring in Prakash Padikal. Prakash Padikal, I personally want to congratulate the Maharashtra government for putting in this clause. The builders cannot refuse to sell flats on the grounds of religion, caste and eating habits. And we know that in several parts of Mumbai, in several parts of Pune, this is a huge problem. That there are people of certain religions and there are people who are non-vegetarians who in spite of having the ability to buy homes, don't get homes. Nobody will sell them a home. Well, uh, uh... I first of all congratulate Magic, Bri Magic Bricks for uh, taking up the issues off and on and uh, bring it to the limelight and making, uh, uh, making an approach towards the, uh, you know, making the law in place. Uh, you know, it is very easy to make laws, but the implementation factor is the most important thing to consider. Actually, the law, it, is, it will remain in the books unless and until it is implemented systematically. That is number one. There are so many flaws. Yes, uh, uh, Mr. Prabhu very categorically mentioned. There are so many issues which are yet to be considered, which are of uh, very important nature, uh, which has to be taken up and uh, resolved. No, what and are the these issues, Mr. Padikal? What are these issues? You know, th there is a, a, one of the major issues which I consider as very important is the oh, occupation certificate and uh, what you call uh, and occupation. Uh, the occupation certificate uh, is the base uh, what they are considering. Earlier, if the 50% uh, or more flats are sold, uh, the, you know, the, it can be, uh, the society can be formed. Hmm. But now they say that it is on occupation certificate. This is going to create a lot of confusion, lot of problems. I will request if you are have a, having a direct access uh, to the uh, you know lawmakers, kindly bring it into their notice and uh, get it rectified. In fact, let me just bring in Anand Parvardhan here. This is an excellent point, Mr. Parvardhan, because right now what happens is if there is a developer who has not delivered a project, the buyers of that developer or that project can actually get together, form a society, approach the courts as a group. Will the fact that right now societies can only be formed on, uh, on receipt of the occupation certificate, will that impact that? Should they be allowed to form a society irrespective of whether or not the OC is given? I think there's a lot of mix up. Formation of a society after the 97th amendment to the constitution has become a fundamental right. Hmm. How are you linking that up with OC? People can always come together, form a society and then start construction by themselves which has been happening and there is provisions even in the bylaws for such kind of societies, plot holders, societies etc. So there is a mix up between this particular concept, getting an OC and then forming which is completely different from what MOFA says which has been in existence since 1963 where under section 10 of MOFA the minimum number of flats sold the builder is required to register a society. So this is absolutely in conflict with what is our experience so far. And now what is the new thing that is coming up where we are going to experiment further, waiting for the OC to come. 
Right, and, and I want to bring in Pankaj here. Pankaj, one of the problems that we had in the beginning was the escrow account. And I just want to take a minute to explain to our viewers what the escrow account is, because I know that our panel has very diverse views on it. So the escrow account is a special account that developers will have to open. When they collect money from buyers selling apartments, 70% of that money has to go into that special account. And that money should only, only be used to construct the building in question, the building that, these, that the customers have paid for. It should not be used for anything else, for paying salaries or for paying your interest on your debt or anything else. It should be used for construction, not marketing, not anything else, only construction. Now, here's the problem. According to the rules, the escrow account will only become applicable to sales that happen after the real estate regulator comes into force, not the money that has been collected before. Now, Pankaj, I want to bring you in here. What happens then to buyers who have already bought homes that are delayed or not being delivered? Because if the escrow account is not retrospective, it doesn't help them in any way. Yeah, it is a, it's a big problem and it's a structural problem also because the builder have already used that particular money and they don't have that money to be, uh, you know, brought back into the escrow and that's why they have looked at. But having said that, the way the escrow account definition has come in where the land and construction cost plus other costs which a builder incurs, uh, you know, uh, uh, is considered and the 70% of the money to be um, uh, to be deposited. So that means what it says that 30% as a profit builder can take away. Now in Mumbai and most of the places where the land contributes 60 to 70% of the value of the um, uh, you know, uh, project. In that sense, I realized and I did my calculation anywhere if the property prices more than six or seven thousand rupees, that's where the builders will never leave enough money in the escrow to take care of a construction if you do the entire maths and analysis. So, so if, you, if, you, if you take into consideration land cost, interest cost, you take into consideration all the premium developer yes. and, pays and, and, and the all those things. the definition of land cost and, and construction cost is very loose. Even very something loose. that was borrowed before can now be used and you can take off yeah. take it out of the escrow so if you borrowed from someone and paid them back in the past with regard to this project yeah. so, it can be taken out of the so escrow frankly speaking in overall sense if i if i see that escrow accounts essence got really lost once we had the land and the construction costs integrated earlier if you look at the earlier bill it said that 50% of the amount to be maintained in the escrow to be utilized for construction costs hmm. Now they say that 70% he has to maintain towards land plus building. That means 30% as a profit he can take it away right from the first day. And which so you is, think the which escrow is, has, is completely toothless right now? It, it is toothless. No it makes no Adesha sense. Pratap, it's more or less the, the escrow old. toothless? Uh, well, to an extent, yes, there is a certain ambiguity regarding the costs which are to be included in the escrow. But let me just I make a point here that the concept of escrow to real estate projects is not new. Even when the MOFA Act came out in 1966, under Section 9, you had the provision where a, where a builder would have to maintain a separate bank account in respect of all sums received by him in respect of the project. This was indeed a very strict re requirement and to an extent under the RERA rules especially because the rules serve the purpose of clarifying the nature and object of the Act. We have the government which, is, which is, has rather loosely def, defined the, the scope of the term escrow. And when I compare it with the MOFA definition, yes, there is a greater scope for ambiguity here. And to include the costs which are incurred so far as costs, well, that could be a point of contention. Mr. Chaturvedi, escrow has no teeth and has been completely No, no, diluted. I disagree with all this thing. I'll tell Why you. do you disagree? The basic issue of escrow is a project cost has to be defined. And 70% of your, when you say a flat has been sold, the sale of the flat includes land cost, other cost, including everything today. How you work out a cost of the flat? That you, not only the construction cost, construction cost is about three, 4,000 rupees, 5,000, depending on the size of the building. But if you are selling a flat for 20,000 rupees, and 70% you want to maintain the escrow account, that is 14,000 rupees per square feet. Well, no, the construction no. ratio is hardly 20% or 30% of it. Balance naturally has to be a land cost and other cost of the project. You cannot bifurcate each and everything in the project cost. 
Let's be practical. Okay, so, so this is my question. Mr. Shatavedi, answer this question for me. Now, I can rattle off the names of many projects in Mumbai and in Pune where people have paid money and not received their homes because the construction has just not been completed for various reasons, including the fact that the developer has run out of money. There are, there, How will there, this help them? This will not help them in any way. Issue. You are saying the developer has not completed. Well, let's hold the officials also accountable. My debate has been very simple. Why developers should be made accountable? All because the, the government developer took money all the government and promised a product. All the government officials who are involved, right from lower part to the highest part of it, they should be made involved, accountable in the RERA. Unless until they are made accountable, then you are not going to achieve the target. Okay. I would this disagree with that. Today, today, I tell you, we are talking of Developers no, no. living. Mr. Chaturvedi, Mr. Chaturvedi, developer has taken let money, speak, not delivered the product. Out. Let no, me no, speak no. out. Let me speak out. Okay, In past ahead. five years, this problem has arisen. The developers are leaving the project unfinished. Before yes. five years, if you see, all the developers have been completing projects in time. Some projects are 10 years old. Uh, and 10 years old, maybe. 10 let's years. talk about because Bulul. Let, uh, let's see, put up that we, part we of it. We can't There has been uncertainty incidents. in the policy. There has been uncertainty in the policy. We have to see the, the incidents, policy. not there the incidents. There has been uncertainty in the approvals. There has For been litigation. Years? For 10 Various years? Various litigations in court years? going on. Okay, so you have to understand no, see, that I, part I will, of it. I will, I will give you this, Mr. Tathavedi. There are several developers in the market who have delivered on their promises and delivered yes. on time, delivered quality. Yes. This industry has several people who are still doing an excellent job. But these rules are not being written for them. This industry also has people who have delayed buildings for 10 years and are now not doing any work on it because they realize if they sell it to someone who bought it 10 okay. years ago, they will lose all the possible profit they can make on the current price. I want but, to, in fact, don't, hang on, let me, let, this is why we have Prakash Padikal yes. here. Prakash Padikal. You've been fighting these cases now, 10 years in Mumbai. Tell us, tell us an experience. Tell us what this is like. There are several projects which are uh, not 10 years, even 15 years. 2005 onwards, I can um, point out four or five such projects which is in Mulund where the money has been collected from the total. Some people had paid 100% and they are waiting for uh, you know the deliveries and the construction is at around 20 percent that is the level set with the constructions are and that also now seeing that the recession and other problems what they face they stop the construction also in many of these sites so thousands of examples i can quote in this area where the virtually they are left with nothing the people had sold their flats living in rented houses they have to pay the emis and some cases, even people call up and say that we have, we are left with no other alternative other than committing suicide. Can you say, Parika, for yeah. what reason the project has got stalled? You know, there, there, there was a, there, there was a reason. There, there were certain reasons, but which was resolved so, about was three years back. Was responsible for that reason? No, well, the responsibility is all over. Let, 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 let Mr. Parika answer. Mr. Parika. Mr. Parika. Mr. Parika. You see, was developer responsible for that reason to the project coming on hold? Let us be clear about it. We are talking of developer not delivering, not doing anything, not implementing, not ag agreed. Now, who, are, who is responsible? Go to the that responsibility, I can exactly get what you are intending to. But there is a responsibility on the part of the official dam also, which has yes. to be, uh, yes. you know, I, I yes. do agree that. Yeah. But even after correcting everything, you know, there is a case, you know, three cases in Mulun where I can say thousands of flats are being constructed, supposed to be constructed and which is not being delivered. But it, the things are cleared three years back. By now, at least they should start the, uh, you know, construction. So, Mr. Parikal, Mr. Parikal, you are saying that all of the regulatory years. problems, all of the regulatory problems were ironed out accepted that there is regulatory problems, accepted there is corruption yes. in the system, accepted that our system tends to be, uh, it tends to be extremely unfair. Now, all of these problems uh, get ironed out three years ago. But there has been no work since then. Absolutely. Why? Why? Absolutely. I tell you, again, go back to the no, root no, let, of it. Let me I, I will tell you the reason. The, 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 the uh, builder want to, uh, you know, get extra money for the space what they are selling. You, you understand the developer telling. issue, I tell you, in a cycle, see, see, what he has sold in 2005, the construction cost may be 700 rupees. Today, when you are in 2016, the construction cost is 3,000 rupees. Developer, you expect a developer, when he has sold at 1,000 rupees per square feet, 
to the rate of 10,000 yes. per square feet. Do you expect a developer to put his own money because of no fault of his and pay the buyer that from your own pocket? Argument. That is one question what has to be understood. Okay. That so is let's, let's actually, that's an excellent that's question. question. That's an excellent I question. Let's, 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 that. let's actually tackle that question. That's an excellent question. The, no. If a developer sold yes. at a certain point, yes. assuming certain amount of costs in building yes. that construction, yes. Yes. And later, because of regulation, because of yes. red tape, that got delayed. Yes. He is now 10 years down the line yes. where the costs are completely different. Yes. Who's responsible? Who's is responsible the, for is the developer now at this point legally expected to take a hit on his own pocket, finish the project nevertheless, and hand it over to the buyer? I, I said Pratham. no. No, okay. I would no. disagree with that. Even under the I basic no. principles of contract law, a builder signs a contract with the buyer. Once a price is agreed upon, the terms of delivery are agreed upon. You don't need a RERA or a MOFA to say this. Even a simple Indian contract act says that once the terms of a contract are agreed upon, it is the contract which stands. Of course, the contract in itself may contain some inbuilt clauses for maybe escalation. But the point is, when does escalation kick in? Escalation kicks in when the project stalls. When the project continues, there is absolutely no question of escalation here. That's what and the no, question no, And thirdly, no, why does the project stall? Yes. The reason for stalling vary from Let's region to region. The part of in the Delhi area, it. in the NCR area, you have builders who cannot, who have no money because they have blown up all the money on acquiring huge tracts of land. In Bombay, you have builders who have all the money, but uh, unfortunately, due to there is illegality in almost every construction, as a result of which every project runs into some problem or the other. Further, you have, especially in Mumbai, you have numerous cases where after a project starts. Builders want to amend the plans. There is an amendment to the DC regulations. They want to take the benefit of the amendment. They load some TDR. They want to add the TDR. So if you keep amending the okay. plans yeah. time and again, huh. of course, such hiccups are bound to come. And right, these are not individual incidents. Almost every builder time and again, after the project starts, after sell selling maybe his flats, he tries to amend uh, you know, so you are saying that, so, so Aditya on. Pratap says that the only way that a project gets stuck in red tape and regulation is when the builder is trying to make a quick buck. No. No, no. that is what I'm saying. No. You have to no. understand the object of the RERA by seeing its provisions. Why RERA contains such an inbuilt mechanism so as to ensure that a builder, you before commencing his project, you, you don't he, need he RERA files all if his your accountability of the official, if your accountability of the official, okay, so, okay, just, just to make this simple for our audience, Anand Bhattwadhan, I'll bring you in here. For anybody who saw the movie Rahis, and there is this point in that film where there is the protagonist, Shah Rukh Khan, is building a big complex and he runs into trouble with his, uh, with his politician and the politician says, Koi baat nahi, isko hum environment problem mein dal we will green remove area his mein kar diya. green area, mein kar diya. we will remove his permissions to, co to complete this project and he will be ruined. Anand Patwadhan, does that happen? That is that accurate? Is that how it works normally? Who is responsible in our, for it? Let in us, our real Kuda, estate industry, who is that, responsible that kind of then responsible. in that case? Anand that kind of situation has come not once but many times. Yes. Most builders are stuck Agreed. up because suddenly you have an environmental problem, so you mm. don't get soil. Uh, I'm sorry, sand. Sand dredging has stopped. Yes. Suddenly you come up with another problem which says, oh, this is the yes. forest area. Yes. There are so much and so many such changes that keep happening in the DC regulations yes. itself yes. that there is no simple straightforward formula by which a builder can work. Alright, so this I'll give you a simple example. Two points here. I'll give you a Number simple one, example. Is I'll give you a simple example. Environmental violations are the most, the Aditya. environmental laws are the most frequently violated laws by builders throughout the city and the country. Aditya, Further, Aditya, one more point Aditya, Aditya, with, Aditya, which was Aditya, 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 said was the amendment to the DC regulations. One example. There's a point here okay, that okay, under the General Clauses Act, once you get an approval under the old law, you have to be, you are bound by the old, old law. Okay, all right. You all right. cannot let, let benefit of the new law like that. Let I Mr. Chatham be one, one yes. example. Well, I but the you. BMC does one. take benefit of the fungible area issue. But rather than fair. No, BMC is a statutory authority. You can't take the BMC. That, that is where the problem is. Aditya, one at a time. Gentlemen, one at a time. I'll tell you one example. In South Bombay, if you remember in 2010-11, a dobler was installed in Navy Naga. And when the dobler was installed, all the heights of the building were restricted to 70 meters, if mm -hmm. you remember that part of it. And there were various litigation in court. Ultimately, the developers association, they won in the court. And they were said, 
it cannot be applied retrospectively. Okay. Fact. But it okay. took four years All right. to come to that conclusion. Understand? Can you make developer responsible for the dobler which was placed after okay. knowing there are high rise building in Bombay? All right. Let me just let me just ask this question right now to our panel, and I know that Mr. Parikar, Ramesh Prabhu, and Pankaj have points to make. The revised RERA, from what we understand yes. from our sources, will say that projects cannot be registered, which means they cannot be sold. Projects cannot be registered with the regulator until all permissions are secured. Absolutely. So once you have all your permissions, only then you will be able to register the project, only then you will be able to sell that project. Is this the possible solution for all of the problems that we are talking about? I will first go to Ramesh Prabhu. Ramesh Prabhu, will this solve our problem? I think uh, this one way it is very good, but you will find lot of builders and uh, you know the contractors who would even getting before getting the permission they start constructing the flats. Yes. They sell the flat even after becoming. But they won't an era. be able to. Yeah. But they won't the, be able therefore, to the question is about the implementation. So the, if there is a strict implementation and then the BMCs and other regulatory authority who are supposed to look after this and make a proper complaint to the regulatory authority, I think so many things can be done. There is a penalty of 10%. There is an appeal provision. A lot of things will you know do. But at the same time, I think uh, the only after getting the approval, uh, getting the real estate regulatory permission to sell the flat is one of the best of the best thing that can happen and I think that is one which we, wa we wanted a long back so that the yes. buyers are not taken for a ride and they are right. always aware that something has been vetted and certified by the government of Mahesh. All right, I just want to bring in one thing Mr. Chaturvedi, you can respond to this but Amrish Kulkarni from Pune is on the phone line. He's just called us and I've kept him holding for a very long time. Amrish, thank you for calling us. Go ahead, what would you like to say? Uh, yeah, thanks for the opportunity. I'll quickly um, touch upon the very first point that was touched upon in this debate. Uh, that was uh, about the OC certificate yes, as yes. a condition for formation of a cooperative society. Now, even without prayer and without this condition, uh, under MOFA Act itself, my building where people have been staying since 2011, hmm. uh, the OC certificate is still not there. Uh, builder uh, has uh, uh, not himself performed any property society. When people have tried to form it by approaching the sub registrar and joint registrar, in spite of 60% uh, signatures and we being financially sound, it has been rejected and now the appeal is uh, running with the cooperative minister. Mm. So what I'm trying to say is, uh, sorry, one more addition. Uh, in consumer court, we applied consumer court has ruled in our favor uh, and it uh, uh, told the builder that within next six weeks, if you do not form the society, you have to pay 100 rupees fine per month. Hmm. So what I'm trying to say here is... 100 rupees fine not, per month. Per month. It's not yeah. a king's fortune for a developer. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's uh, at, uh, at Pune Forum, uh, Pune District Forum. So what I'm trying to say is uh, uh, government should not add any uh, uh, conditions uh, that builders can misuse for delaying these kind of compliances. Hmm. Uh, and uh, the, the main benefit right. for them yeah. uh, for, uh, is that they keep the control and they can keep on revising the plans Sure, 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 sure. Gerald from Pune is also on the phone line. Do we have Gerald? All right, Gerald is not here right now. Uh, are they, uh, are they the, uh, okay. Yes. Okay, one second. Sorry. I, yes. I promised Mr. Chaturvedi he could respond. Okay. Mr. Chaturvedi? I'm responding to Mr. Prabhu. Register only after no. all permissions are secured. I'm, yeah. After the permissions were granted, the basic issue in redevelopment yeah. is the tenant issue. Hmm. Now, when you start development, you give a commitment to a buyer and sub-tenants, they go entangled, they don't shift, they don't vacate the premises. Who becomes accountable for it? Again, when you're talking of accountability of a developer, all stakeholders in the project should be made accountable. My concern is very simple. Till all stakeholders are made accountable, you are not going to achieve the target. That is one issue. Number two, regarding OC we are talking. OC is mandatory for the society formation. I would say that is right. I have seen society members before OC, if you form a society, the balance area of a developer what is unsold stock. Hmm. The society members, they blackmail you for sale. They don't allow you, they take a transfer fee, they do all this nonsense no, no, with no. a developer. 
I, I, I mean, I mean, but that has nothing to do with the OC. If you have a remedy in the law, if you don't talk about remedy in law, everything is a remedy. No, this is a question of the remedy in law. Let us be practical. Let us be practical. Let us be practical. Why are the people talking about the law? Why are the people talking about the law? One second, one second. Until the building is completed, fully sold out, handed over to the buyer. Yes. If you granted, then only the society has no, no, to form. Hang on, hang on. Mr. Chaturvedi, Mr. Chaturvedi, you seem to be misunderstanding here two things. One is the OC should be gotten by the developer when the building is complete. Yes. It has yes. absolutely nothing to do with whether or not you've sold all your inventory. It has to be done. Understand one thing, because if you have not sold inventory, the society will always create a problem for the unfolded inventory. But if we, if we are currently, we, we, uh, and Pankaj Kapoor, we currently live in a world where selling all of the inventory could take anywhere between 5 and 10 years at yeah, this point. No, no, the builder no, no. never complete, completes the building until he has sold it out. Yes. So yes. frankly speaking, that's how the modulation happens. Is like yes. that he will never receive enough money to undertake to fulfill the construction. Correct. And that's why the most of the delay, if you take an island city, where we most of the premium properties are there last 10 years only five or six building got ready and that's a period when we were writing the growth story of the real estate so and largely because the prices went up so high so you're saying Pankaj, yeah, yeah. so that our audience can understand that all of this is moot because unless the developer manages to sell everything he is not going to finish that. Absolutely. Right. So right. the person who yeah. bought yeah the person who bought at the very beginning is at the mercy of the developer's sales team. Absolutely. You know, one more I'll point, to, which I one, point of one, difference here. Uh, yeah, just yeah. one more yeah. point then I want finish to. And then I'll go yeah, to the I just one more point I want to really put through here is like you look, uh, you know, the very premises of this RERA was transparency, and that transparency, which Prabhu also mentioned, that the disclosure which was made available to the consumer, it was not not meant only for consumer, but several other parties who are a stakeholder to this because there is a one data which is available. Today, frankly speaking, what happens is that we are sitting and talking about one sanctioning authority has either put it, uh, you know, something like environmental or TDR mm -hmm. corridor or forest land issues yes. because yeah. he is unaware of any facts that what is going to be the impact. A lot of time I've realized if you look at Noida Bulk Sanctuary or a forest land issue or environmental clearances or TDR uh, corridor issues, these are the issues which were imposed, mm. were there for a year or so and later on removed. If you look at Bulk Sanctuary, what happened earlier and later on, it has created a problem so, so for the developer. Now, question is that once this data is available, it is transparent, which can be used by several parties and people so to make question. a rightful Actually, decision. You know, let's, but, let's ask this question. And I, and I think that this is a very good point to discuss. The fact that even if you say... Mr. Chaturvedi, even if you say that the people who give permission should be brought under the purview of the yes, regulator, yes. that would be the BMC, that would be the fire department. What about the environment department? All, what about the NGT, which is a Supreme Court level court? Can you bring the NGT yeah, under so the that regulator? Can, that can you make the developer the responsible? The national, the national I, I, I completely tomorrow, agree. The NGT tomorrow is governed by the NGT tomorrow, Act. Tomorrow, it is an act of parliament. Tomorrow, and secondly, the NGT a court with can never come within the ambit the of an administrative body. The work gets stopped. How can you expect Vera to, to give direction no, no, to the NGT? Completely fair point. I, let's, NGT is a judicial body. Let me put this on record here, and I've said this on this channel many times before that those people who are responsible for handing out permissions yes. for buildings should be made accountable, accountable. yes if there is Absolutely. a if there is a permission that has not been given within a certain set of time if it takes 15 days or 30 days or 45 days to hand out a permission and you've decided not to give that permission there should be a very valid reason offered for not giving that and permission. The so you have to see one the angle here. Why, why is the permission, permission given? refused? No, no, why do we have to just a minute? Let me. No, I just had a minute. And there's a reason for that. Aditya, just a building project cannot Aditya, get overnight approval. Aditya, it's a fact. Aditya, for the simple reason Aditya, that Aditya, town planning has numerous parameters. Aditya, Aditya, traffic Aditya, management, Aditya, air quality okay, management. Aditya, Aditya, Today you have builders Aditya, constructing without environment Aditya, clearance. Aditya, Aditya, what has happened in Delhi? Aditya, Delhi has the worst air quality. Aditya, we cannot Aditya, loosen Aditya, the regulatory regime for Aditya, developers. Aditya, okay. Okay. In fact, in the West, such studies are here. Aditya, I'm going to have to ask you. Just one. Okay, hang on, hang on, gentlemen, gentlemen. Okay, one second. If we all shout over each other, our audience cannot understand us and we are effectively wasting their time, yes. which I personally do not like doing. 
Yes. So Aditya has made a point. He said we should not relax the regulation. Aditya, my response to that is we. I'm just saying that if a permission has been denied, there should be a proper reason offered for the denial. That's this right. is the violation. Hence, permission was denied. Yes. That is my only point I'm making here. Pankaj yes. Kapoor first. No, I, I just have one question. I, I just have one question. I just go by the data. How many buildings never got delivered? Where the irregularities were? I would say that, you know, even though the approval were not granted for a period of time, but later on what happened? What happened? Builder Absolutely. managed it. Yes. If builder is able to manage it, why do you have to stop it? That's where I say that, why don't you allow it first phase? Hmm. Why do you have to make the overall thing unproductive? Why do you have to uh, make the consumer suffer for it? Uh, uh, you know, I, tell me few buildings, I, like you I, won't I, be I, able I, to I, count I, 10 I, buildings. I, 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 well, I, 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 that's a very good point. And you know, let me just point out to our audience. One second, I'll let me point out to our audience. Pankaj Kapoor knows more about delayed projects in the NCR region and in Mumbai than most of the other people who in the country. So Pankaj knows what he's talking about when he says there are several buildings that are delayed, but less than, you said what, 10? Ten yeah, less than 10. I, you know, if you take 20 years history, how many buildings never got completed? You would never find, and the buildings which That's, are installed today, because of the regulatory or irregularity and all those things, I would say that they will still get regularized and will they will get eventually. delivered. Let me also bring in Ramesh Prabhu, who hasn't, yeah, uh, yes. who's been I, very I, quiet. I, Ramesh I, Prabhu, in your I, experience, I what causes delays? Yeah, I completely disagree with Pankaj Kapoor. Uh, nothing should be allowed to be constructed without the proper permission. I agree. And I secondly, agree at this point. I have been in consultation with Gautam uh, uh, Chatterjee, who has become a regulator now. He also has agreed that even the BMC authorities or the planning authorities who are delaying beyond a certain limit, the builders can bring them as a party and we can always get them, uh, you know, answered because ultimately the builders are dependent on the various permission to be granted. Yeah. And if we don't bring those parties into uh, ambit, I think uh, we cannot deliver the justice. In order to yes. get the justice... One more issue. The one more issue. Authority See, we should, also, made we should also point out at this point one that Dr. Chatterjee is an issue. extremely respected, yes, yes. extremely learned officer and uh, we're very glad to have him as the real estate regulator in Maharashtra. That's He's been extremely receptive to uh, suggestions that have been made by citizens, by activists, by media, and by the developers themselves. One Mr. more Mr. issue Mr. I would I, like I, to I bring into the radar and make. One make. more issue. Yes, yes. Any permission what has been granted, once if RERA has approved the project, any law coming later on should, should not, not be affect the project. Isn't it that should, the not, case it should not be retrospective. Today, but laws are being implemented. You can't dictate terms to Parliament. No, no, no. I tell you, I have to that. be very clear. It's a ridiculous it's suggestion. A ridiculous it's suggestion no, because we you cannot affect the decision of the Supreme Court. Alone, Nothing can affect the Parliament. The Parliament is at liberty. One at a time. So basically, what what Mr. Chaturvedi is saying, and Prakash Padikal, I'll come to you with this, that once the permission is given, given. There should be no changes in regulation that causes a stop work of any yes. sort. Prakash yeah. Parikal, do you agree? I fully agree with that because I had fought for 10 years to get justice for a half a million people who had booked their houses, got all the permission from the government. Suddenly, one fine morning in 2005, the government comes out and say that it is all forest land. Correct. You have to fight for Correct. 10 years and in 2014, the Supreme Court pronounce that uh, what we were arguing is absolutely correct. Who will po pay for the sufferings yes, of the people? Yes, that's exactly yeah. what I want to say. You know, this is, you know, this is the 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 bad bad enforcement. From day one onwards, we were, we were telling that this, you know, accountability, fa accountability factor should be imposed in this particular thing. It is yes. a very essential thing. People who are trying to make this kind of draconian rules after granting all the permission and making the people to suffer, should be punished for it. Absolutely. I think, that, I think this panel... Law should not no, be there should be I think this panel is in law should not be imposed think, on, yes. on the development. In retrospective yes. effect, I it should be prospective effect. Is, is, then you can achieve a target. Again, one more issue. One second, one second. Before you, I think this panel is in agreement about the fact that anybody who has the power to grant a permission or to take away a permission in any way should be accountable yes. to either the regulator or the appellate tribunal, which is the court that the regulator will set up. So, for example, if a building has come to a halt and the developer and the customers go to the court, to the appellate tribunal and say, our building has stopped, that court will then summon that particular authority and that authority should be liable to answer. Anand Patwadhan, do you agree?
Absolutely. Correct. There has to be accountability. Correct. That is like uh, Padikal just said. I am also of the same school of opinion that yes, if there is no accountability and for any strange reason is there sudden change of rules, how can that be permissible? Yes. There has to be some sense of not only responsibility, but where the citizens can have faith in the governance system. All right, I have Prajesh yeah. on the phone line from Bangalore right now. Uh, for the rest of our viewers, our phone lines are open and this is a very learned panel on real estate. So if you have a question, you should call. Prajesh, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I, uh, see, my question is actually, see, as far as the accountability is concerned, hmm. we should make even the government accountable because many of the areas where the projects are developed, is the government ready to provide the water? Is the government ready to provide the roads, proper roads? See, all the development, see, if you are talking about the development, then the development should be all around development. It should not be only uh, put the onus only on the developer. Is the government ready to provide the water in yes. those areas? Yes. The water is going through tankers. Yes, absolutely. Mr. Chaturvedi, and I'm going to ask you a very honest question, and I, and I know that you like giving honest answers. I know that there are various parts of our cities, and since we're talking about Maharashtra, whether that is Mumbai, Thane, Navi Mumbai, Pune, the uh, the Pimpri Chinchwad, the PCMC area, where developers are meant to are asked to sign affidavits saying we do not expect water from you. We will provide water. We will take the responsibility to provide water for this uh, for this building that we are building, and only then their permissions are handed yes. over. Is this not true? Yes, yes. It is bad. In fact, it is the responsibility of the government. Once if they are giving sanctions, they have to provide for the water. They have to take care of the sewage part of it, and they have to ensure that the permission, the authority, yes. what they are putting in place, they should not impose any retrospective laws on the proposal what project has been approved or completed or in the process of completion. Today, you should not keep on changing the DP plan, the project which is under construction. If you change your DP plan, suddenly you put some reservation on the plan, as right. you have seen the but picture. you know, in, in Mumbai, we don't have the risk of a DP plan changing because DP plan has not been made for over two years. If they years. make the if they make the DP plan, then we can have a fresh conversation about them changing it. But the BMC has not made a plan for this city. It has been delayed for two and a half years. It is appalling and embarrassing. Mumbai has a development for us. plan. No, it's an old it's plan. It's an old plan. It's, 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 it's an old plan that is 22 years old. Aditya. Yeah. No. I want to very quickly before I go See, into break ask Prakash Parikal. Prakash Parikal, do you agree? that uh, government should also be made right now accountable for services that it has to provide yes. to people Absolutely. who buy homes. Yes. Absolutely. If you, uh, you know, a couple of days, the same question was asked by, by media to me. I said that before providing or, the, or uh, sanctioning uh, the plans, they should provide infrastructure. When you con keep on constructing large number of buildings, mm. you know, how will you provide a trans you know, proper roads? How will you provide, uh, you know, accom for accommodating so many number of people? Where is the water resources for that? So, you know, it is very essential that the state should be held responsible for granting, uh, prior to granting permission, they should uh, find resources for uh, giving it to the people. All right, yeah. we're going to have uh, to I take... just want to add one point. Yes, yes here, Ravish. Here, there are five professionals who are made accountable. So, we are talking about government authorities, we are talking about, uh, you know, builders, we are talking about buyers of the flat. Here, five professionals will be, in fact, going to be ears and eyes of the regulator. There is a advocate who is going to give the title report. He has to mm. have certain years of experience. Otherwise, he will be made accountable. Then yes. we have an engineer who has to certify the work. There is an architect who has to verify. Then the chartered economy is going to verify the entire project and not in form, in substance. And therefore, there will be a yearly audit. And this is going See, to be a great responsibility. And if any of the professionals do something wrong, I think they will be held responsible. Therefore, now the projects, as I understand, it will be definitely going to be having a good standard. And I think uh, it will have a better future once right. the regulatory we're, authority comes into place. We're going to take a very quick break, very quick, 30 seconds. But on the other side, we're going to talk about this point. Builders cannot refuse to sell flats on grounds of religion, caste and eating habits. That's on the other side. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. You're watching The Urban Debate and Magic Books. Now we're talking about the real estate regulator and this is something that affects us all who are going to buy homes, those of us who own homes in the city. When we went into break, we were talking about the fact that the Maharashtra government has adopted and accepted some of the changes that we had asked for on this channel 
to the real estate regulator. We welcome that move of the Maharashtra government and we welcome the fact that they have taken on board suggestions, over 500 suggestions that have come from various stakeholders in the industry. And one of the things that I would personally want to applaud from the government is this move that builders cannot refuse to sell flats on the grounds of religion, caste and eating habits. It is a brave, brave decision and depending on how it is going to be implemented. So it's one thing to talk about implementation, but the fact that we wrote it down, I think is a huge step in the right direction. The fact that the government made it stand very clear because there was no rule up till now about this particular point. The government has made it stand very clear. We can now talk about what happens in implementation, but this is a huge step for us as a country and specifically as a state in Maharashtra. Mr. Chaturvedi, big move. Will this yeah. be difficult to implement? Yeah, it's a big move and uh, it would be difficult to implement in certain part of Mumbai. Mm -hmm. Why? As there is a social segment. If you go in Muslim area, mm -hmm. where in Bindi Bazaar, Nal Bazaar, JJ Hospital, there is a segment people would like to prefer only the Muslim purchases in the whole building. Today, they don't expect any Hindu buyer to come and buy a flat in that is locality. That, is that the only problem? In, in the locality. Is that the only location? So that is that one part of it. I am yes. talking the reality mm -hmm. because I have been staying in this area. I am aware of it. Mm. The moment you come down to other segment, there was social separation. It's not a question of vegetarian, non-vegetarian. When you come to our area like Girgaon, you come down to area like Walkeshwar, Nepenthi Road, Altamount Road, there the segment would say, any vegetarian person, and now is the question vegetarian and non-vegetarian. I'll tell you, there is no discrimination in selling a flat to a non-vegetarian person. I doubt whether people are talking about it because there is no law be that we can sir. restrict any non-vegetarian person buying a flat in a society. Let us be practical. It has never been a There case. is no law. There is no law. Only and it was a practical aspect what developers were adopting, looking at the social aspect of the area of the building. Right, Ramesh Prabhu, right, Ramesh Prabhu, I want to bring you in here. We have on this channel discovered that several developers just discourage either non-vegetarians or people from other communities by saying, we don't have inventory. Abhi kuch bacha nahi hamare paas. Yeah. Come back tomorrow. Correct. And if the same person or at the same time, a vegetarian of yeah. a certain community walks in, yeah. automatically inventory is available. So yes, there, is, there is uh, you know, a, a, a sort of selective selling that is already happening in this market, isn't it, Ramesh? And it's that's not just in certain pockets. It's happening across the board, th depending correct. on which community yeah. forms you know, the target audience for a certain developer. Yeah, the, the, such a lot of complaints are coming. In fact, it is happening if the existing housing societies also, they are, don't allow for, for certain communities and all. It has been reported many times. And also the developers, basically because they will always say we don't have inventory when they see that uh, certain types of people who come, who they come to know that it is a non-vegetarian people or any other community people, they flatly refuse. As you have rightly said, there is no stock. And when the same other uh, relatives or the people whom they think can be sold, then they will say that we will give you from the investors inventory. Mm -hmm. So this way, the developers are also indirectly refusing for certain community and certain uh, people who are having a different heating habit. Yeah. Aditya Pratap, there is, I will guarantee you, there is religious, yes. uh, you know, typecasting, profiling happening and people are being turned away in a market where developers yes. are finding it difficult to sell. It's a but shocker. It is shocking, but at the same time, the law is so beautiful, it provides a remedy. Now we have the RERA. As he had said that certain builders may hide inventory. Mm. Now under sections 3 and 4 of the Real Estate Regulatory Act, the builder has to keep a list of flats which he has sold and those which are not sold. He has to have a real-time data Pankaj in which he will have to show so, so he cannot hide inventory. But Pankaj. he but he cannot hide inventory from regulatory authority, but he can hide from the consumer. No, it cannot. You it, can get the information no, no, from no. Vera. It is if very well stated over there. You can have a case of cheating. Those disclosures are not available to the, to the consumers. But, but Aditya Pratap, okay, 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 let me give you those an example. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example from what Ramesh Prabhu just said. I, as a developer, have 100 units to sell. Yes. I sold 20 to my best friend. Yes. Right, which is what is shown. 
Now, if Pankaj walks into my office, I actually want to sell him an apartment, I'll sell him one of the 20 that have been sold. But actually, there is a loophole there. So technically, it doesn't protect us from the problem. No, well, if about. an apartment has been sold to someone, that apartment then cannot be sold to you. If it's sold to you, it would be directly a case of cheating under Section 428. No, no. tell me. No, we will get to know. Because Haveen. every See, sale of property has a registered is that instrument. Is that more than 20% have a registered instrument. Are you, are you yes. banning yes. second yes. sales yes. from yes. the market? Yes. No. Yes. Anand, hang on, hang on. Hang on, hang on. Hang on. Yes. Anand, yes. Anand, yes. Anand, yes. Anand Patwardhan, yes. is that true? There is a part right agreement that could be done where the original purchaser can become a co It is the investor who have to sell his flat. But Builder cannot resell a flat which is sold to an investor. It's a case of cheating. There is a loop. Or, uh, is there is no loophole, it is an illegality, it's an offence. No, no, Aditya, I don't well, think I mean, that. Yes. We, are, we are just trying to then say that nobody can sell anything and yeah. we are just trying no, to see, come we up have a with mechanism a to show. Where the under the RERA Act, the builder has to, to disclose all the housing which are sold Roti and not Kapadana sold. Khan was government responsibility. Government has never constructed or built or developed cities. It is the builders who right. have done that. Government show up is only the uh, government town building plan and municipal authority. Show up is on even the phone line from... Yeah. Even the court building that has been constructed in Bombay has collapsed. Let's not forget no, that government that has, has a failed separate remedy under in the every law. way that to give out proper with housing Rera. to people. Let's that was the certainty that. of the mark. So don't try to okay, say I have that actually, you know, that's like Anand Patwardhan, Anand Patwardhan, I'm very anything. glad you brought no, that up. I'm very glad you brought that up. One second, one second. I just want to have a very quick, I have a minute. I'll just reply one thing. If you keep on tightening the screw on the developer, you don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, who will come forward for See, construction? Don't use the word tightening screws here. You the law regulates everyone. You, you have to balance Today is an era of regulation. No, no, Aditya, Aditya. You have to balance the pollution. Aditya, 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 there is a desperate need for affordable housing. Yes. Desperate. And when I say desperate need for affordable housing, I mean in the city of Mumbai, houses that are priced at 40 lakhs, 50 lakhs, 60 lakhs, 70 lakhs, not at 2.5 crore rupees. Who can afford homes at 2.5 crore rupees? A ridiculous amount of money that a two bedroom of less than 700 square feet it is priced at 2 crore rupees. It is ridiculous. The case is similar right now in Navi Mumbai. The case is similar right now in Thane. You have to drive for an hour and a half to get anything. But now, in order, in order to, to, in order to, one thing. second, in order to make that affordable housing, and I have a minute on this, Mr. Chaturvedi, should the government be writing separate I'll just, rules I'll for just, affordable I'll housing? I'll just talk about it. I'll yes. just talk about it. If you're talking about a price hike today, if you see BMC, what amount of money they are collecting from the developer, Hmm. in the form of fungible FFI, development charges, development fees, land under construction. It's almost 35% to 40% of the cost what BMC is collecting today from the developer. And there's no difference ultimately, between luxury and affordable no, as far as the BMC is concerned. Ultimately, the cost goes on the consumer. Okay. Let us, Mr. Chaturvedi, please explain how 30, 40, 40 is going second, to, the, to the BMC. I, I, one second. Your stamp duty is very five or six percent. Aditya, one second. Aditya, one second. Development I, I, premium is a token. I'll, I'll, I'll how can you say 30, 40 percent of the BMC? You know, in Greater Mumbai, the fungible and approval cost is nowhere less than 3,000 rupees. And if you add the if you add the land cost and construction cost and the premium cost, which is today's premium itself is three thousand rupees. Yes. I my own sense is you can't have a price less than ten thousand rupees in whole of Greater Mo Greater Mumbai. Greater Mumbai, you are just a cost, 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 cost to cost. Cost to cost. Very important that the supply. BMC also has to look forward and come and, and, and say that both, yes. are they pre premium productive yes. enough? Yes. Yes. The, have easy, they easy, have easy, to wrap up. I have to wrap up. I've you, the easiest way for cheap housing is make the FSI 19, 20, 25, no, 20. No, 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 it no, can no, be done no, in one no, go. No, no, no. But the day you allow a 20 FSI, I don't Mumbai's think you're being infrastructure will collapse. The fact so, remains, the Mumbai fact does not have the infrastructure have to Mumbai. support huge number of housing the fact units. Okay, yeah. Aditya, 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 I have to wrap up the show. I have it's to wrap up the show. I have to wrap up the show. We will keep a very close eye on housing here on Magic Bricks now. It's very important to us. It's important to all of us as Indians. We want to be able to own the houses that we live in. And there are a lot of problems right now that need to be solved. So as we wrap up this discussion, again, I'd like to one more time appreciate the work being done by the Maharashtra government, but a lot needs to be done and has been pointed out by our panel. The taxes, 
that cost, add to the cost of a home needs to be reconsidered. Secondly, the time that is taken for permissions adds to the cost of the homes and needs to be considered and all stakeholders should be brought under either the purview of the regulator or of course of uh, the appellate tribunal. Thanks for watching. You can watch live TV on our website mbnow.in. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash magic bricks now. And don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at magic bricks now. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com forward slash magic bricks now.